don't overreact to stuff. Okay, like if your teenage daughter in the summer comes home like 45 minutes after curfew, I'm going to ground her for the summer. Oh, chill out. She's a teenager. What were you smoking when you were a teenager? What were you drinking when you were a teenager? Don't overreact. Sit her down, communicate, move on. You see it in sports all the time. Major League Baseball grants the World Series home field advantage to whoever wins the All-Star game. Why? They did that because there was a tie in an All-Star game. And they just couldn't get over the fact there was a tie in an All-Star game. Who cares? Who cares? Home field advantage in the World Series should go to the best team. Over 162 games. They earned it. You see this in college football. Ohio State left out of the playoff. Georgia left out of the playoff. We're going to have an eight-team playoff. Really? Then you see Notre Dame get rolled and you think, maybe we should just have a two-game playoff. Don't overreact. Don't overreact. Now the NFL is saying, and I think they're doing this because they knew a lawsuit was coming from the Saints having their own little pity party. The NFL plans to study making pass interference reviewable. Why? Because they had a bad call in a game? By the way, that, that wasn't called pass interference. So now you're going to allow coaches on plays that aren't called to say, you know, across the field, I thought there was a pass interference. It wasn't called. Yeah, I know, but I want to review it. This wasn't called anything. What are you reviewing? It was a non-call. So you're going to allow coaches now the ability throughout the course of a game to just demand, I see something I think I saw on the other side of the field that should have been pass interference. And I, folks, referee whiffed happens all the time. There are now pictures all over the internet of six calls against the Saints that weren't called. But this is recency bias. In psychology, that's what they call it. You remember the last bad call. That one cost you the game. Listen, if you watched in football all season long, what was the one complaint about the NFL? Okay, they got the catch thing right. The one knock on the NFL all season was, man, there's too many flags. All season. Every Monday I'd show up. That's what everybody complained about, me included. So the NFL, and they've done this through their history, made a conscious decision this weekend. We're not calling anything. There were face masking penalties twice on the Saints. Never called. Uh, Rams cornerbacks were hyper aggressive. There were a couple pass interference calls in the Rams in the first half. Never called. There was a Saints player stepped on a uh, Rams player. Never called. These officials didn't call anything this weekend because they listened to you, the fans. You and the NFL has been doing this for years. You got tired of the catch situation. They changed it. Right in the middle of a season. Super Bowl. We're going to change it. Catches count now. So they listen to you, and you're this morning waking up in New Orleans. The league's got it out for us. Give me a break. Kansas City, New England was the highest-rated AFC game or second-highest-rated AFC championship game in 42 years. Want to know the reason why? There was almost no penalties in the first three quarters. It was a good game. It wasn't that good. I mean, the game wasn't that good. Why did it get the rating? Because the flow was good. No penalties. Only five through three quarters. That's why the NFL is king. Major League Baseball is rigid. The NBA takes a while to figure stuff out. NFL will change stuff overnight. And they did. They told their officiating crews, don't call anything. They didn't, and they butchered one call. Let the Saints have their pity party. Let the Saints laughably talk about integrity. Yeah, this is the Bounty Gate franchise. This is the franchise that had to basically... Suspend the coach, the GM, multiple players, assistants, because they had bounties out on people. But hey, my bad. The Saints, the Saints can claim the NFL has no integrity. Like New Orleans. Really? Integrity? You want to go there? Okay. All right. Don't overreact. Stuff happens. Teenagers make mistakes. Baseball all-star games end in a tie. Sometimes in a college football playoff, a team should get in, doesn't. It happens. And referees whiff. Should be noted. You can find all over the internet this morning multiple penalties on the Saints that weren't called. Two face masking. And in the red zone, the Saints got a playoff after the clock had expired. 
that was never called either. Nick Wright made a great point earlier why the league should not overreact and now start making pass interference reviewable. What they're talking about here is making penalties that were not called reviewable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Enjoy every big touchdown, the most exciting plays in NFL games, big touchdowns late, for that to be an auto challenge. If you have a guy whose job, and a smart, and a smart team would, to look for any infraction on every play, then any big play you will challenge if it's big enough. Disaster. Saints, you lost. Get over it. Mistakes happen. All right, let me shift gears to this. My job, mostly as a sportscaster, is to watch sports and give you the answers. Why did blank happen? That's my job. 75% of my job is to watch sports and react to it. You tune in every day. What call and think about that? Okay. Now, 25% of my job is to uh, theorize on what's going to happen next, predict what's going to happen next, tell you who's going to win this game. But a big chunk of my job is to watch sports and give you answers. And there was one story all NFL season. I even joked about it. I couldn't figure it out. It was the unsolved mystery of the NFL. How the hell is Nick Foles better with the Philadelphia Eagles than Carson Wentz? Carson Wentz is a way better player. It was our unsolved mystery. It makes no sense. Nick Foles appears from nowhere as a career backup. And in must-win games, he's 7-1. and one. MVP of the Super Bowl for a career backup, who was the sixth-best quarterback in his own conference his final year in college. It makes no sense. Well, 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 folks. The unsolved mystery this morning, it got solved. According to various players and sources within the organization, Carson Wentz, quote, selfish, didn't run many of the concepts because he felt that was, quote, full stuff. Ah. So a month ago, I said on this show, I said the only thing I knew about the Foles Wentz thing was that I was told that Foles was more reliant on coaching, less talented guy. That makes sense. Easier to coach. And I said a month ago, Wentz was a little tougher to coach because like anybody that's really talented, Cam, Rogers, Wentz, they're more reliant often on themselves and a little bit less reliant on coaching. That's all I knew. And today it's been confirmed. Foles is easier for the staff to coach. And that, by the way, this is a very human thing. And I don't want to see everybody bang on Carson Wentz. Folks, this is what would happen with anybody in that situation. Tom Brady, an absolute legend, with not only a trophy case, probably has a trophy room or two, his ninth Super Bowl he felt somewhat threatened by Jimmy Garoppolo, who won a single game. And Garoppolo got traded for an end table. And that's Tom Brady. If you're a star or a top draft pick and you get hurt and your understudy comes in and wins a Super Bowl, it's incredibly human for you to kind of bristle when you come back and say, I want to I wanna run my plays. I want to run his plays. Carson Wentz is just like anybody. Hell, Brady, according to various reports, didn't love the fact that his understudy was right behind him. Didn't want him there. So, you know, the, 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 the story, by the way, says that Carson Wentz plays favorites. Do you see who supported him in the story? <laughs> Zach Ertz. When Zach Ertz and Wentz are together, they're like, you know, bosom buddies. They're buddies. They, that's who he throws to. Not a shock, the one guy that supported him in the story and said it's not true is Zach Ertz, his favorite target. So, yes, this is sort of what I was told about a month ago. Now, there's much more severe quotes. He's arrogant. He's selfish. The story also said he's an incredibly hard worker. He's brilliantly talented, and a lot of people like him, but he's harder to coach. So, I, to be honest with you, the only thing that would be surprising is if there wasn't a little tension in the room. Star gets drafted. Star gets hurt. 
understudy comes in, gives the city its first Super Bowl, and you don't think the star's going to have a little ruffled feathers? Of course he is. And the, the, there is no moral to the story other than Carson Wentz is human. And how do you solve this story? Very easily. Smart teams do this all the time. You trade Nick Foles, and there's a sucker out there that's going to overpay him and give you more players than he's worth. Carson Wentz is clearly the future. Carson Wentz is clearly more talented. Carson Wentz is absolutely who you should build around. And Nick Foles, there's a sucker every minute, will pay him a fortune, trade multiple players, and Philadelphia will do what New England does, what the good teams in this league do. Manipulate the suckers. I mean, isn't that what New England's done for years? You ever notice how often New England trades with Cleveland and Buffalo? <laughs> ever notice that? You ever notice they don't trade with, like, Philadelphia, the smart teams, very much? New England, this is what they always say about great baseball hitters. Great baseball hitters don't hit the aces. They hit the three-starter and the four-starter and the middle relievers. New England and Philadelphia are two of the best-run organizations in football. And they're going to make trades for years and years with poorly run teams like Detroit, you know, like with Cleveland, like with Buffalo. So this is an easy problem to solve. Move out of the Nick Foles business, trade him for somebody, get some pieces, draft another quarterback to back up Carson Wentz. It's all good. But the only surprise here would be this didn't happen. If Brady and Garoppolo had tension and he played a game and a half, you don't think Nick Foles getting Philadelphia its first Super Bowl? That's not going to create a little tension? Of course it is. So, so, John, our unsolved mystery, the unsolved NFL mystery of this year, Joy Taylor, it's been solved. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.